my name is Sean McNally and I'm one of the Fall 2017 Science Communication Interns here at ASLO. With the Science Exchange Series, we want to explore the science, stories, and experiences of our members while also highlighting their core values as scientists. This week on Science Exchange, we talk with ASL member Dr. Matthew Bracken about the importance of cornerstone species and his interdisciplinary approach to studying marine communities and ecosystems. My name is Matt Bracken, and I am an associate professor in ecology and evolutionary biology at the University of California, Irvine. How would you describe yourself as a scientist to our viewers? So I'm a marine ecologist, um, and I study mostly things happening along the shoreline and understanding the um, distribution and abundance and biodiversity of organisms. Can you describe the project you're currently working on? So the project that I'm most excited about right now is trying to figure out the interactions between snails that live in tide pools and the things that they're eating. And so um, these tide pools are kind of interesting, they're really high on the shore, and if you look at them you wouldn't think that they're very productive at all. Um, so there's not much growing in there. But if you put an oxygen probe in the water and measure the oxygen, it's incredibly high. So there's actually a lot of productivity in there. There's a lot of photosynthesis going on. Um, but it's all these biofilms that are growing on the rocks. And so intuitively, um, and based on the work that I've done previously, I would expect that um, as the abundance of snails in these tide pools goes up, then that should cause a decrease in the abundance of the algae that are growing on the rocks there. But in fact, I find exactly the opposite. So as the abundance of snails goes up in these tide pools, um, the abundance of the algae also goes up. So I've been trying to figure out why. Um, and my current hypothesis is that when the snails are crawling around on the rocks, they leave a trail of slime behind them. And that's the perfect environment for these algae to settle and grow. And so in effect, these snails are actually farming their own food. You recently published work on the importance of cornerstone species. Can you explain what exactly a cornerstone species is? Cornerstone species are species that are relatively rare, so they represent a very low amount of the biomass or abundance at the base of the food chain, but the removal of those species has really large and disproportionate effects on organisms higher in the food chain. And so I was studying seaweeds that are growing on rocks, um, and um, I found that by removing the really rare species of, of seaweeds, um, it had these cascading effects upward in the food chain. So I removed less than 10% of the biomass because these species, again, are really rare. But um, that caused an almost a 50% reduction in abundance uh, at higher trophic levels. And so that really illustrates the importance of biodiversity, the variety of life for how these systems function. And um, that it's not just common species, but that really, really rare species and the loss of those species can have fundamental consequences for how the system works. Ecosystem biodiversity plays a pivotal role in the proper functioning of marine environments. Why is it so important we understand these concepts? A lot of my work focuses on understanding the causes and consequences of changes in biodiversity. Um, so biodiversity is changing globally, it's declining globally, and unfortunately most of that is because of human activities. Um, and what I've been trying to figure out is um, how do these changes in biodiversity affect how natural systems function? Um, and it's not just a basic research question because intact functioning natural systems provide all kinds of goods and services that we and every other organism on the planet rely on. So you think about the foods that we eat, the medicines that keep us healthy, the materials we use to build our homes, all of these things come from natural functioning ecosystems. And if we lose that biodiversity, we lose all of these resources.